Good day everyone. This is organization and management class. I am your instructor, Mr. Mark Anthony A. Dolumpinas. In today's lecture, I will be discussing to you chapter 3 of the course with the topic requirements of the job. So in this lecture, we will be discussing the different requirements of a job inside an organization. Learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to learn the following. To know the distinction between hard skills and soft skills and their key roles for superior performance of a job holder. To understand the iceberg theory in a manager search for the right person for the right job. To appreciate the importance of core job competencies and to be aware of the different value system that influence employees' behavior in the workplace. We know that it is the people that move the company. Human resource plays a vital role inside the organization. It is the people or it is the human resource that move the company toward the attainment of goals and objectives. Without people, the organization is nothing. It is inactive. A company may have the best forward-looking vision of what it wants to be in the future, well-crafted mission statement, remarkably developed strategy, and action plans to achieve its business goals. But without people, without the right people doing them, the vision, the mission, and the strategic goals and objectives are worthless. That is how important people are in the company or in the organization. Diba? In fact, according to Peter Drucker, Peter F. Drucker, a management expert, the most important resource who can have an output greater than the sum of its parts is the human resource. That is how important human resource is. It can have an output greater than the sum of its parts. Human resource. Diba? Bisan unsa ka nindot imong vision, bisan unsa ka maayo pag-craft imong goals and objectives, action plan, whatsoever. Without the right people, everything will be worthless. That is why it is good, diba, to be a manager. It is good to, to, to know and to determine the right people first. Diba? In order to accomplish the goals and objectives and the vision and mission of the organization. First thing you must do is to look for the right people. Okay, try to visualize a personal computer. Diba? It might be the most modern and best brand you can find in the market. It is the hardware you are looking into. You switch it on and the operating system is now working. But without the software application, your PC is inept useless. Diba? hardware. Without the software application, your PC is useless. By the same token, an organization, the hardware, without the right people or the software, is next to nothing. That is why an organization, diba, it has, it must have four elements, diba? participants, goal, technology, and then environment, and then um environment. Sa to, participants, social structure, technology, and goals. And ika-fifth ang environment. Na-appeal si participants, the right people. An organization, the hardware, without the right people, or the participants, or which is the software, is next to nothing. Take note how important human resources is or are in the organization. Okay, the right person for the right job. The right person for the right job. So, um, considering that it is people which can move the the company towards the attainment of its vision and mission, it is very important that you as manager, you must look for the right person and for the right job. Meaning, putting the right person in the right job and in the right place. That is one thing to consider. Going on from where we left, diba? we left from Mr. Chua's grocery store. His business has turned from good to very good. He has expanded the store. He now sells a complete line of products from fresh fruits and vegetables, canned goods, frozen meat, 
chicken and fish, toiletries, other household needs, soda, wines, whiskies, and other alcoholic drinks. It is no longer a neighborhood grocery. It is little pure gold or cherries food rama in the making. Iba na improved na ang grocery store ni Mr. Chua. Now, Mr. Chua needs an accountant, preferably a certified public accountant, no longer a mere bookkeeper because his business expand. Diba? Kinangan na siya og certified public accountant or accountant. Diba? Kinangan siya accountant. And preferably, ang yung gipangita is the right person and that is to look for certified public accountant not just a mere bookkeeper. No longer a mere bookkeeper. The accountant must be able to prepare all the monthly, quarterly, and yearly financial statements like income statement, cash flow, balance sheet, return on investments or ROI, and other standard financial measures needed for tax purposes and for Mr. Chua to know how he is progressing in his business. That is a, a sort of measuring results, di ba? Si accountant more on measuring results. Income statement, cash flow, balance sheet, return on investment, and other financial measures to know whether the business is progressing or not. In looking for a good accountant, Mr. Chua, who is now a rising entrepreneur, must know what are the requirements for a good accountant and further expands in his business. He needs more people like an accounting assistant, internal and external auditors, buyers, sales clerks, and then warehouseman, etc. What will be the first action of Mr. Chua in the search for an accountant? What is the first action of Mr. Chua? Okay, what will be the first action of Mr. Chua? Mr. Chua will now try to write a job description of the accountant that he is looking for as a guide in his search for a good one and for evaluating the accountant's performance on the job later. The first thing to do, diba? The first thing that Mr. Chua must do to do is to write job description, diba? The job description um, will be the guide of Mr. Chua in looking for the good one, diba? The best accountant for the position, diba? Naatanan sa job description. So, job description is a document consisting of consisting of the duties and responsibilities of the accountant and then the functions the, uh, and then and then um, unsa iyang duties and responsibilities unsa iyang functions diba tanan all about the job diba description all about the job it can serve as guide of Mr. Chua in looking for a good one and evaluating accountant's performance on the job later what is job description Diba? What is job description? In short, description of the job. Diba? It is a written record of the duties, responsibilities, and requirements of a particular job. Diba? Written record of duties, responsibilities, and requirements of a particular job. So, nasa job description, it is a written document consisting of the duties, responsibilities of the job holder. Sa yung mga buluhaton. Diba? It's a statement describing the job, such as its title, location, duties, working conditions, and hazards. All will be laid down. Diba? All will be written through a document called job description. Now, aside from job description, Mr. Chua will be need to, to formulate also job specification. Will be his guide in looking for the right person for the right job. Job specification, diba? Um, in as compared to job description, so this job description, ihang gi describe ang job, de ba? describe ni ang job. What are the duties? What are the responsibilities? What are the requirements of the job? But de ba? So job specification, it describe, it specify the standard of personnel and designate the qualities required for an acceptable performance. Meaning, so job specification is another written document. But it consists of the standard qualification of a personnel, diba? And designates the qualities required for an acceptable performance. So, standard, diba? Qualification. Job specification 
talks about this, the qualifications of the job holder. The requirements sought in an individual worker for a given job. What are the basic job requirements of an accountant? Diba? So, muna siya sulod sa job specification. The requirements sought in an individual worker for a given job. Sa job description, nakatutok siya sa trabaho. Unsa ang trabaho, unsa ang responsibility sa job holder. But sa job specification, nakafocus siya on sa requirements, diba? qualifications sa worker diba? or the job holder. Okay, what are the basic job requirements of an accountant? Now, in looking for a, an accountant, Mr. Chuam have to craft job specification to to know the the, the necessary requirements of uh, the necessary requirements, the qualifications of the job holder to be hired, and then job description will be the guide in 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 showing the duties and responsibilities of the job holder later, diba? Right? What are the basic job requirements of a job, of an accountant? He or she must at least be a holder a bachelor's degree in commerce, major in accounting, preferably CPA. And today na napunta karon, di ba, bachelor's degree in accountancy jud, although not necessarily na CPA. But must better if CPA. Long range wise, it is better if he or she is CPA, certified public accountant. Because if Mr. Chua needs an internal auditor in his expanded business, he can move with ease that accountant to the internal auditor position. An auditor under the law must be a CPA. Diba? So, must better jud nga CPA. What are the basic job requirements of an accountant? In, in, addition, diba? in addition to being a commerce graduate, an accountant must be good in numbers. Beyond budget preparation and other numbers crunching activities such as expense sheet, account payables, labor laws, com labor law compliance, SSS, GSIS, Peel Health, Pag-ibig, compliance of tax laws, and BIR compliance. Dapat, um, um, uh, these are the job requirements. Diba? This is the basic job requirements of an accountant. Dapat, kabalo siya how to prepare this um, um, various reports. What are the basic job requirements of an accountant? It is obvious that in the performance of these responsibilities, the accountant must have the technical expertise in the use of computers and its software application like Excel, diba, spreadsheets, and many more. Diba? Dapat kabalo siya basic, diba? or has technical expertise in the use of computers. Are these skills good enough for an accountant to succeed in his, his or her job? The answer is no. Those skills are called hard skills. So, enough na ba to para mahimu siyang successful na accountant? The answer is no. Those skills are just hard skills. And a good accountant must also have, must also have the so-called soft skills. So, must also have. So, aside from having hard skills, Diba? A good accountant must also have the so-called soft skills. So, dapat, in looking for the right person, for the right job, dapat, we, may, we must consider the hard skills and the soft skills. Okay, there are three differences between hard skills and soft skills. Number one. To be good at hard skills, it usually utilizes the intelligence quotient or IQ, also known as the left brain or the logical center. While to be good at soft skills, it usually takes emotional quotient, also known as the right brain or the emotional center. Dapat, in looking for ha, employees, not just an accountant, employees, diba? employees in general. Dapat, Nay, hard skills, not with soft skills, diba? Now, how are we going to differentiate hard skills and soft skills? First, different, the first difference, si hard skills na asa IQ, meaning na learn, diba? Si soft skills, EQ, emotional center. Examples of hard skills, math skills, physics, accounting, pro programming, biology, statistics, etc., Examples of soft skills are self-management skills, self-confidence, stress management. In reality class, hard skills is 
hard skills are requirement, but also organizations this time, company this time, really also consider soft skills, diba? Kung sa kawalan niyo yung mga hard skills, if you don't have self-confidence, you cannot manage stress, diba? Dapat balance. You should have hard skills and you should have soft skills. Examples of soft skills also, people skills, communication and working skills, persistence, perseverance, patience, etc. So, soft skills are really necessary also. Hard skills are rules where rules stay the same regardless of circumstance, organization, culture, and co-employee. Hard skills are rules. And the, the rule in hard skills the, is the rule itself. They were the same regardless of any circumstances. Regardless of what organization you are into or regardless of who are your co-employees. In contrast, soft skills are skills where the rules change depending on the circumstances, organizational culture, and people you work with. Number three, hard skills can be learned in school or training. So what you are learning in schools are hard skills. But also, I, 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 I do believe that while learning hard skills, napoy na develop sa inyong soft skills, di ba? There are usually designated levels of expertise and a direct path as soon how one excels with each hard skill. In contrast, there is no simple path in learning soft skills. Most soft skills are not directly taught in school and have to be learned during interaction with other people in school or during on-the-job training. So there are studies class na, um, sa, sa theories of learning. Um, sa school, what you can learn is our, uh, what can you, what you can learn is cognitive learning, meaning learning from books, learning from teaching of your teachers, and then learning from school, diba? formal education. Cognitive learning. And then, pero mas muritain pa dyan. Aside from uh, si cognitive learning, mas muritain pa sa imong una, una ang social learning. Diba? Napunta kita huwag social learning. And mas, uh, mas as to retention, mas uh, dako siya percentage compared to cognitive learning. Si social learning, ma-learning mo ni siya through interaction with other people. Diba? Like, um, talking with different types of people na ay ma-boost si siya mga confidence. Social learning na siya. Diba? Ma-learn mo through on-the-job training. Tapos na itawag ko experiential learning. Meaning, um, you learn um, based on your experiences. Diba? You learn based on your experiences. Experiential learning. Meaning, learning by doing. Meaning, na-experience ni mo mo nang na-learn ni mo. So, mas better po siya compared to social learning. So, that's it. Um, based on the differences... Hard skills are being taught in school and formal education. And the soft skills are not directly taught in school. In, in fact, you can aqua actually learn it through interaction with other people or through on-the-job training. Um, in, in looking for the right person or the right people for the job, it's good to consider it, it, the hard skills are necessary really, diba? Right? The education, the hard skills, the say, capacity, uh, IQ. However, a hiring managers this time also consider the importance of soft skills. In fact, they consider soft skills are core individual competencies. Like for example, na na nang apply para yung CPA. So hiring managers this time would all would consider the soft skills aspects of that particular person. So laban ng soft skills. That is why soft skills this time are said to be core individual competencies. In the past, skills and competencies are changed interchangeably. Diba? The word competency has evolved into a different meaning. But this time, when we say competency or competence, it is already a combination of knowledge, skills, and attitude. Key SA. Diba? Knowledge, skills, and attitude. Manay ang competence karon. And skills um, uh, Skills is not enough, diba, to make you competent. You must have knowledge and right attitude. Now, the focus now is on core competencies. Core competencies. Relatively new, introduced by C.K. Prehalad and Gary Hamel in their 1990 Harvard Business Review article, Core Competence of the Corporation. The most powerful way to prevail in global co competition 
stated in 1990 Harvard Business Review article is still invisible to many companies. During the 1980s, top executives were judged on their ability to restructure, declutter, and delayer their corporations. In the 1990s, they will be judged on their ability to identify, cultivate, and exploit the core competencies that make growth possible. Indeed, they'll have to rethink the concept of corporation itself. A business just starting out will try to first identify and then focus on its core competencies, allowing it to establish a footprint while gaining a solid reputation and brand recognition. So it is encouraged this time that corporation must focus on identifying its core competence. Di ba? Unsa ilahang tatak sa company before establishing a footprint and gaining solid reputation and brand recognition. Core competencies, these provide the, the best chance for a company's continued growth and survival as these factors are what differentiate the company from competitors. Core competencies are factors that differentiate the company from other competitors. Core competencies in a company are di di difficult and challenging to achieve and not easy to replicate. And core competencies are soft skills. Diba? Soft skills are core competencies. They are difficult to achieve, challenging to achieve, and not easy to replicate. These competencies become the constant and pervasive characteristic and source of competitive advantage of the enterprise which are sustainable over time. Like for example, Sony Ericsson or Sony Corporation's core competence. Their core competence on tatak sa Sony Corporation is miniaturization. Canon's core competence, optics, meaning klaro siya as to photography. Honda's core competence, engine expertise and dealer management. Since it is the people that get things done in a company, the core competencies of the company's human resources must therefore be identified, cultivated, and exploited to make the company grow and survive. Now, since it is the human resource serve as the most important resource of the company, it is the people who get things done, the core competencies of these people must therefore be identified, cultivate, develop, and exploit, use, diba? to make the company grow and survive. These core competencies must be aligned with the core performance of the company. Putting it in another way, it is human performance that is at the core of the company's business performance. What is job competency? Diba? What is job competency? I made mention kanina that competency has something to do with knowledge, skills, and attitude. And we, we may mention kanina that in looking for the right person, for the right job, you must consider not just hard skills, but also soft skills. And soft skills are core competence. Now, now we will discuss further what is job competency. When you say job competency, it is the ability of an individual to do a job properly. We can say that a job is competent enough if he has the ability to do the job properly. He has the knowledge, he has the skills, and the right attitude for the job. That makes job competency. The ability of an individual to do a job properly. Diba? Job com competency is the, is the capacity to follow a set of defined behaviors, structured guide that enables the identification, evaluation with comma, and the development of the individual in the development of the behaviors of each employee, combination of knowledge, skills, and personal attributes or attitude. Take note. Competency is a combination of knowledge, skills, and personal attributes or attitude, PSA, that contribute to enhance employee performance and ultimately result to organization success. Now, in hiring people now in, in, in various companies, di lang knowledge ang i-consider, as well as skills and attitude. Di ba? And, and pinaka-importante is attitude. Why? Di ba? Unsa man yung knowledge, unsa man yung skills, if you don't have the good attitude at work. Diba? Bright ka. You are very skillful. But, you don't have good attitude at work. Kapulan ka. Di ka, mo, di ka mo tanong sa mong trabaho. Knowledge and skills, it seems useless without good attitude towards work. Now, it must be a combination of the three. Knowledge, skills, and attitude. 
to contribute to enhance employee performance and ultimately result to organization success. Core competencies, these are those that organizations identify as contributing the most toward achieving strategic results. According to personal management in the 21st century, job competency is the underlying characteristics of the individual. Knowledge, skill, attitude, and motivation, which results in effective or superior performance. Diba? The combination of knowledge, KSA, knowledge, skill, attitude, as well as motivation, but the underlying characteristics of the employee, which results in effective or superior performance of the job. Core competencies are, these are all examples of soft skills or core competencies, diba? adaptability, commitment, creativity, motivation, foresight, results orientation, leadership, independence, emotional stability, analytical reasoning, communication skills, customer focus, teamwork, and cooperation. It's very important that um, in, in looking for uh, the right person for the right job, not just uh, knowledgeable siya, skillful siya, but also nasa aning mga skills, di ba? Can communicate, customer focus, teamwork, operation, etc. Okay, there are other competencies required depending upon the kind of a job an employee is holding, the culture of the company, and his or her rank or position in the organization. For managers and executives, for example, leadership competencies required are talent management, change management. This is for managers and executives. Come on, future, the future managers and executives. These are the required competencies that you must possess. Talent management, change management, team leadership, conflict management, project management, negotiation, and influence. Okay, last is the iceberg theory. So we will now discuss hard skills and soft skills by using iceberg theory. It originated from the writing style of the famous Nobel awarded novelist Ernest Hemingway, also known as the theory of omission. Hemingway focuses on the surface without explicitly discussing the underlying themes. That is why in hiring for people, do not just refer to knowledge and skills. Look deeper, diba? Look deeper on the underlying themes, diba? the underlying characteristics of that particular person to know whether he is really competent to the job or not. Like an iceberg, diba? Hemingway believed that, the, meaning, that the, the deeper meaning of a story should not be evident on the surface, but should shine implicitly. He compared his theory about writing to an iceberg. Diba? Carlos Baker, his biographer, explains that in writing the style of an iceberg theory, the hard facts floats above the water and the supporting structure completely with symbolism operates out of sight. This theory is known as applied to management of people. Like an iceberg, what can be seen among the employees is the surface or hard skills. Diba? Like an iceberg, Unsa din ato unang lang taon is hard skills. Yan, educational qualification, diba? skills. The soft skills are not visible. Diba? They lie beneath the surface like an iceberg. What you see in the whole thing, there could be a mountain-sized iceberg below the visible iceberg on the surface. That is why um, in, in, in looking for the right people for the right job, do not just focus on hard skills. Try to discover the people's or the person's soft skills. That is one way of knowing whether that person is competent enough or not. Um, try to look at the iceberg, diba? Um, management of people is like um, looking at or hiring people is like looking at an iceberg. Do not just focus on the surface. Usay makita ni mo. Knowledge skills. Because those are not enough to know whether that person is competent enough for the job or not. Also, consider the attitude. Diba? Consider the attitude. Ina naka importante si attitude. Diba? The values, the self-image, the traits, motives. So, delete na nimo makita. Diba? Ang yung makita is only hard skills. But soft skills are not visible. That is why, ang hiring manager, they really find ways to, to know not just the hard skills of that particular uh, applicant, but also the soft skills to determine whether that particular person is competent or not. And in today's, gen in today's generation, management uh, organizations this time really value more attitude, diba? 
as the most important uh, job competent competency, di ba? As the more, most important characteristics of a worker to possess in order to be successful, in order to be, uh, in order to be, um, to work better in the organization. Di ba? 20% good but not limited information regarding education, experience, skills, or your gut feel. 80% must be taken from the essence of a person, taking styles, motivations, job, fit. That ends our lecture. I hope you have learned something. Take note that in hiring or looking for the right person for the right job, not just focus on hard skills but as well as soft skills. Aside from knowledge and skills, attitude also plays a vital role in the perform or in determining whether that particular applicant is competent or not. That would be all. Thank you for listening. God bless ahead.